Hey there, I am Regina Callion and I am the lead in correct instructor for Remar Review and I'm so excited because today we are going to talk about the common clinical situations on the exam. And if you have taken and failed NCLEX, because I'm, I'm, I'm really talking to the nursing students who who know what I'm talking about. You've taken the NCLEX exam and you you remember those questions, you remember those scenarios, and you you come to the realization that, okay, this test is not just talking about uh, certain facts. This test is talking about how a nurse behaves. Uh, NCLEX is an exam based on nurse behavior. And so I want to talk about the difference in how you should be uh, uh, anticipating what's on your next test, right? What's on your next NCLEX exam. And so um, you, I, I know that if you have gotten through nursing school, and hi, come on in. This is Remar Review. We do this every Monday. Uh, we talk about how to pass NCLEX. So if you have gotten through nursing school, there is one thing that I know about you. As a nursing instructor who has taught thousands of students, I know that if you have gotten through nursing school, you know how to study. You know how to study. That is not your issue. And so that's why if you are doing my virtual trainer program, I give you the study calendar. This is the week two study calendar for the registered nurses. By the way, any NCLEX review should be providing you with a study calendar because you are trained in nursing school on how to study. You know how to study. You know that it will directly affect your grade and we like we learned that in nursing school right so i know that if i give you the calendar it will set you up to succeed it will set you up to study um but 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 that's not the the big issue the big issue that i want to address today is the difference in what you're expected to know in nursing school and then what you are expected to know on your NCLEX exam and i don't want you to confuse the two so in nursing school, what are we taught, okay? In nursing school, what are we taught? We are taught to learn and recall facts, right? We, we learn the facts and we recall the facts. So I'm gonna do this exercise with you, right? Because I know you're nursing students and that is why, excuse me, that's why I have this book, Quick Facts for NCLEX because the, the facts are so important. They're so important to you being able to behave correctly, right? Because we're looking for a specific behavior from you, but it has to be based on the facts. So this is why I say Quick Facts for NCLEX is a book every nursing student should have because in nursing school, you are indeed learning the facts and you're tested on the facts, right? So this is a great foundation for nursing. So like, let me give you an example. You guys just answer the questions. I'm looking for fast fingers. We're talking about nursing school facts here. So if I asked you this question, you, you should know the answer. The question is, what gland produces insulin? Okay, what gland produces insulin? This is a, this is a very um, uh, elementary nursing school fact. Every nurse should be typing in as quickly as possible. Yes, I know the, the pancreas, right, produces insulin. But let me ask you this. Is the pancreas a gland or is the pancreas an organ? That's another nursing fact. What, it, what would you say? Is the pancreas a gland or is the pancreas an organ? Mm. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So uh, you, you, you see... In nursing school, we are expected to recall facts very quickly, right? Uh, thank you. Venus says, the quick facts is amazing. It is. If you don't have this book, please, we're putting it in the link. Get it. Quick facts for NCLEX. So I asked the question, Audra, is the pancreas a gland or is it an organ? And everybody should be saying, well, the pancreas is an organ. It is an organ, but it has the functionality of a gland because what does it produce? It produces insulin, right? So, all right, so th this is what we're talking about. We're learning here. If you are here, I expect you to learn something today. You come here to learn, right? We're students of nursing. We're always learning. The next question I would ask you is this. This is nursing school facts. We're calling them very quickly. So if a client has a burn 
and the doctor orders silver nitrate, what is that medication going to do for the burn? What do we know about silver nitrate? It's a fact. This is just something. It's a fact. This is just something that we learned in nursing school. Why would we put silver nitrate on a burn? Does anybody know? Okay. And again, again, we are moving from understanding. Well, we're moving from understanding that the NCLEX exam we don't have to be afraid of. There is so much mystery around the exam that sometimes the very thought of NCLEX causes anxiety to nursing students. Whether you're an international nurse, you failed NCLEX already, or you're just studying for the first time with me. Um, the goal of us having these conversations is so that you don't have to be confused. I'm going to tell you exactly what is going to be on the exam so that you can prepare for it. All right. So we know uh, uh, the question is there on the screen. If a client has a burn and the doctor orders silver nitrate, what is the medication going to do for that burn? What is it going to do? OK. And the answer is it is going to it is going to decrease bacteria. Right. Silver nitrate will keep that burn clean, prevent infection. Very good, Keisha. That is what it is going to to do that is what it is going to do so uh it's, it's not quite a cooling agent i do i do like the, the thinking because remember the exam is about nurse behavior it's about nurse behavior so you do have to anticipate okay what we're going to talk about i don't want to get too ahead of myself um so we're just recalling facts right now because there's a different way you have to think about it when you're actually doing the questions so silver nitrate very good i just wrote a couple questions down here um um okay let's just go to this question here we're talking about labor we're talking about labor what is going to tell me more about labor is it going to be the fetal heart rate or the frequency of contractions what is going to be uh, more descriptive? What is going to tell you more about labor? Is, is it a, a fetal heart rate? Or is it, is it the frequency of contractions? We're just recalling facts here in nursing school. And I am here to acknowledge everybody who sends me an email and says, Regina, I don't know where to start. I don't know where to begin. Well, actually, your beginning is your very first day of nursing school. You've already done the hard work of learning these facts, right? A lot of you know this book. You know this book front and back. And the best part about this book is just, it's, it's just question and answer. That's all it is. It's just question and answer. So there's no paragraphs, right? And I should be able to ask you any question from this book. And you should be able to tell me the answer, okay? Because this is the facts about nursing. And so I asked, and actually this is the, um, because I'm the, the writer of both these books, I have, this is the original version. And then this is the, the five-star version, which is the updated version. Um, so I will show this one. It's the newest version of the book, okay? So the question is, what is going to tell me more about labor? Is it going to be the, 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 the heartbeat of the infant, the fetus, the fetal heart rate, or is it going to be the frequency of contractions? And so I see a lot of mixed answers. I see people saying, well, you're going to learn more about the labor based on the fetal heart rate. The fetal heart rate will tell you more about the labor. And some people are saying, no, it is the frequency of contractions. So both are very important and both are unique. But when we are talking about actually labor, when we're talking about labor, we are going to want to look at the frequency of contractions. Yes, the frequency of contractions can tell you uh, 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 if the labor is a true labor or a false labor. The frequency of contractions can tell you um, is the 
Is the Pitocin working if a Pitocin is given for the woman? The, the frequency of contractions can tell you, okay, um, is the baby coming quickly or do we have more time? And so if we're thinking about labor, contractions are going to give you more information. And this is just a recalling of facts. This is um, what we learn in nursing school. This is how you get A's in nursing school by learning these things, right? And so I was talking about the quick facts. So I'm just going to ask you um, a question from uh, the quick facts. It's, it's in the sickle cell anemia section if you want to follow along. Okay. These are facts about sickle cell anemia that nurses need to know. So the, the question is, how long does a normal red blood cell live? How long does a normal red blood cell live? And so think about... Um, Think about sickle cell anemia and think about the problem because a normal red blood cell lives how many days? Do you know? Uh, I got nurses. I got Kimberly. I got Danielle. I got Mary uh, all studying with me today. This is, I bet you, this is the largest NCLEX study group right now happening anywhere on the planet. So you made it. Congratulations. We are talking about, oh, Charles got it. Uh, yes, 120 days for a normal red blood cell. Excellent, yes, excellent, 120 days. And so when we talk about sickle cell anemia, we are understanding that this red blood cell does not live as long. Actually, the quick facts says they can live from 60 to 20 days, all right? So you, have, you don't have a healthy red blood cell and that red blood cell is prone to doing what? Is prone to clotting, right? Um, so this is sickle cell anemia, right? This is the facts that we need to know. Also, we know that sickle cell anemia, most commonly seen in African-Americans, all right? So these are recalling facts. And this is great if you can do this in nursing school. And this is amazing. It will absolutely help you when you are preparing to take your NCLEX exam. But it's just really the first step because the facts are going to help you to understand your behavior, the appropriate behavior for the exam. So let's go over some nurse behavior questions and you will see it's very, it's very different, right? So example of, of nurse behavior here, and I wrote this down, um, it says this, this is the first question. During a skin assessment, the nurse notices a wound. What is the priority action of that nurse? Totally different, totally different type of question. This is what NCLEX does, right? This is nurse behavior. If you are doing a skin assessment and you see a patient with a wound, what is the first thing you do? And I, I'm keeping it kind of easy. Um, I do have a study guide, Tina, for the T's test. I do. It's called, it's actually called Quick Facts for T's. And I may be able to pull it out somewhere from here. Um, but so, um, so, 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 so the nurse behavior considers all of the facts. It considers all of the facts in here, but it pulls out it pulls together the priority. And so um, I have my, wait, where did I put my book? Oh, here it is. Let me just grab it. So uh, the, the nurse behavior portion of my review really comes from the, uh, the virtual trainer, the lecture, the lecture portion, because it's different to be able to, um, it's different to be able to just list the facts, but you have to understand how to, uh, understand the priority. And so with this book, it's a little bit different from your quick facts because you are actually going to be taking notes in the book, right? So I wanted to just show you like, it is more filled with places for you to write what is important, okay? And I love the answers on the screen, right? So with this book, you are going to write notes in. You're going to listen to my lectures. My classes are going to be there for you 24-7. And this is where we really get into the nitty-gritty of like what is important. How do we... Uh, how do we determine the priority? And then how do we measure it? How do we evaluate it? So if you are a nurse and you notice that a client has a wound, 
the first thing that you're going to do, it's not going to be call the doctor, right? It's not going to be run and apply any kind of medication. It's not going to be wash the skin. It is actually going to be, yes, measure that wound. You want to measure it. You want to know how big it is, right? You want to ask the patient how uh, 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 have they have they noticed it? Have they seen it? Is this a brand new wound? You're going to want to be able to stage it, right? If you have that advanced knowledge, but the first thing you need to do, right? You need to get a measurement on that wound, right? You need to get a measurement on that wound. And um, I see some people saying, put on gloves, put on gloves, right? So um, ideally, anytime you can come in contact with the patient's blood or body fluid, you need to have gloves on. That is nurse behavior. That is, right? That is nurse behavior. And so measuring that wound is going to be the priority, measuring that wound. Because remember, uh, yes, 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 uh, assessing it, right? Um, remember, when we talk about infection, I know infection is, uh, I know infection is big, and we always think about infection as a, a consequence a consequence of our patients, but infection actually takes a long time to prevent, to present itself. So when you talk about um, nurse priorities, infection is a delayed, it's a delayed presentation and it's a delayed manifestation. Normally before that, you're going to have issues of hemorrhaging, you're going to have issues of impaired skin integrity, um, you, you might have issues of um, uh, uh, vital sign changes before infection sets in because infection means that uh, a virus has time has time has had time to incubate bacterial uh, infections means that has had time to grow right so um remember to prioritize infection all right it, it's not always the first thing that we think about but i see nursing students putting it as the first thing a lot of times all right so we would measure it we would measure it good job let me give you another scenario all right, so you're working in maternity. Here we go. We're working in the maternity room and the nurse has the option to put the baby to breast. The nurse has the option for the baby to breastfeed, in other words, at five minutes or at 25 minutes after delivery. Which one is going to be better? Which one? Thinking about nurse, this is nurse behavior, right? So is it best to allow the mother to breastfeed five minutes after delivery or 25 minutes after delivery? What would you guys say? And you may be thinking, well, that's not a big time difference. What are the priorities of the nurse? What are the priorities of the baby? What are the priorities of the mother, right? Um, and even if you don't have, and this is the thing about NCLEX, it doesn't it doesn't matter if you've ever been in the situation. It doesn't matter if um, you have ever worked as a maternity nurse. There are certain facts that should determine your behavior. Um, there are certain things that I go over in here that should determine your behavior. And so I see a couple people saying five. I see a couple people saying 25. So that lets me know that that lets me know that this is a gray area that you may not have learned in nursing school. This is a gray area that the exam would be like, okay, so the nurse who knows this is proficient in this area, right? And so the correct answer, the correct answer, guys, is actually five minutes, right? So you're going to pick the soonest time after delivery to allow that baby to breastfeed. And if you think about it, it makes total sense if you understand the principles and the benefits of breastfeeding to the mom, right? To the mom. Because uh, uh, um, usually after delivery, our baby's hungry. Usually after delivery, our, our newborn's like, oh man, I really need a big meal because that was just traumatic. I gotta eat something now, right? Not really. 
not really, you know, I, I am, I am the mother of three, right? Um, so I've been through this process and I can tell you from clinical experience and motherhood experience, after a newborn is born, they don't want to eat. All you mothers know, know that out there. They don't want to eat. Um, so the, the, the correct answer is actually going to be five minutes, right? You want to have that baby um, for the benefit of the mom, if that's what the mom is going to do, you want to have that baby um, a nursing because what does nursing do for the mother? Nursing helps to produce hormones for the mother, right? It helps to um, increase the maternal infant bond, right? It helps to, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? For the, the fundus or the uterus, it helps to uh, prevent hemorrhaging, right? Help me because I'm, I'm missing the I'm missing the term, but you guys know what I'm talking about. It helps to constr uh, constrict, right, the uterus, so there's less uh, there's less possibility of hemorrhaging, right? So you have to think about it. it yes, 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 exactly, exactly. Um, so you want to have that done sooner than later, and then also the the newborn after birth because it's been stimulated so much. It is awake and it has that uh, that sucking reflex very strong. So eat, yes, there it is. Stimulate the lactation. Thank you so much. Oxytocin production and uterine contraction. Yes, I love it. Thank you guys for putting notes on the screen. Help me so much. Also the other students. Um, so yeah, so this is what we're talking about. This is what we're talking about. We are talking about nurse behavior based off of the facts. Because yes, we could have said, what are the benefits of breastfeeding, right? But NCLEX is going to put you in the scenario and then see how you act. And, and so that's what I'm, um, that's what I'm excited to, to teach you and to talk about and just to have that discussion. Because sometimes we don't know something until we're asked it and we're like, oh yeah, I didn't think of it that way, okay? So we're talking nurse behavior on the NCLEX exam. All right. Um, oh, I have some more. Okay, I have some more. All right, um, the next one is this. The next one is this. You have a psychiatric patient. Um, they are sitting quietly, not eating. Okay, psychiatric patient, they're sitting quietly, not eating. All right, they're in the dining hall to eat. What is the priority action of the nurse? Okay, so now we've transitioned to psych. You know NCLEX can do this. They can put you in the maternity room in one question and the next question, you're in the psychiatric unit. So you're in the psychiatric unit. You have a patient in the dining hall. Food is in front of them, but they are not eating. What is what is the prior, prior, priority action of that nurse? What do you guys say? Okay, and it's on the screen. Thank you so much. Shout out to Team Remar, who is always supporting uh, you guys with customer service, uh, knowing what product is best for you. Please, if you ever uh, need any kind of questions answered about, hey, Regina, how do I get started? Email Team Remar. It is support at remarreview.com. Support at remarreview.com. So the question says this, you have a psychiatric patient, they're sitting quietly in the dining hall, not eating. What is the pri priority action of the nurse? Okay. Um, Esther says to allow them to sit quietly. Okay. All right. Just allow them to sit quietly. Um, anybody else? Ask why they're not eating their food. Okay. Um, and remember, with, Remember with psychiatric patients, how do we have to be in our communication? We do, we have to be very therapeutic. But I guess the, the, the mindset that I wanna get you guys down to is that when you have a psychiatric patient and they're not eating, do you intervene? Do you intervene at all? Do you say, uh, okay, it's all right for them not to be eating. They're on the psychiatric unit. They don't wanna eat, they're adults, they don't have to eat. Or are you compelled to do something based off of the, I'm, I gotta keep going back to it, based off of the facts, okay? What did we learn? What did we learn, okay? Nurse, this is nurse behavior. Yes, our communication, absolutely. It has to be therapeutic. Thank you, Precious. Thank you so much. She says, hi, Regina, you are the best. Thank you. Christine says, go and sit with them. Go and sit with them. Facilitate it, right? Um, see why they're not eating it. It might be the ketchup. You're right. M maybe they don't like ketchup. Maybe they're looking for barbecue sauce or mayonnaise. Yuck. Uh, but hey, what, what could it be, right? 
Um, so the priority, and Antonia, did I say it right? Ask them to talk to you. Let them know how you can help them out. Okay, yeah, 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 absolutely, right? So you do, you have to do something. NCLEX wants you to do something. They do not want you to um, understand the principles of nutrition because we know how important nutrition is, especially if they're taking like what type of medication, especially if they're on any kind of medication. We don't know, we're not, we're not saying that, you know, they are, but they are on a psychiatric unit and whether they're on a psychiatric unit or a med surge unit or an oncology unit, they should be eating. That is a part of your treatment plan, right? So you need to find out why they're not eating. Mr. Brown, a lot of you guys got this right. Mr. Brown, is there something else you would like? I notice you're not eating. It can be difficult to eat, Mr. Brown, when you're in a new place, right? Remember, we have to uh, we have to affirm the patient. We have to acknowledge their feelings. Um, Mr. Brown, would you like me to get you something else? Is there something you want to talk about? You know, and so yes, you have to engage them. You have to engage them, all right? And so, um, yes, I like that too. April says many psych medications, they may cause nausea. The patient may not be feeling well. Well, that opens us up to something totally different. So, hey, are we here? Are we vibing together, right? Are we understanding now that this test is not just about recalling facts? It is about how are you going to behave in a certain situation, how you're going to behave in a certain situation. And that is the difficult part about studying for this exam. And some people will say, well, you don't, you don't know what's going to be on the exam, right? So you can't really study for it. No, you absolutely can study for it just by what we're doing. So I want you guys to show up every Monday. I want you guys to get in the virtual trainer so that we can have these conversations, right? Good job. Good job. And I have, I can't believe it. You guys are all here. I can't believe the number of people I have on right now. You guys are incredible. You are incredible, amazing. All right, here's one. Here's one, here's one. All right, nurse behavior, nurse behavior. You have a patient after, okay, let me say this. You have a patient, they're having an asthma attack. What is the priority nurse behavior? Is it going to be teaching the client to cough and deep breathe or... Maintaining a calm environment. Which one? Put it up on the screen. All right, here we go. You have a patient, they're having an asthma attack. What is the priority nursing action? Is it teaching the patient to cough and deep breathe or maintaining a calm environment? What do you say? This is how to pass NCLEX. This is it right here. This is it right here. If you know it, you know it. If you know the answer to this, you are, you're prepped for NCLEX success. You're prepped for NCLEX success, okay? <laughs> this is what it's about, guys. Being a nurse is about protecting the public. It is about carrying out your desire to assist people. And sometimes it's unusual ways. And sometimes it's, it's not something that you would naturally think of or do. And that's why nursing school is so important. That is why getting into a good nursing program is so important. And also um, finding, finding, finding me, finding me, because I love helping people pass NCLEX. And even if, some, even if you didn't learn something during your nursing program, I'm gonna make sure that you know it before you take NCLEX. Right? We are going to go over the content, the content, the content that helps you make great decisions. So there is a little divide. There are some people that are just saying during an asthma attack, maintain that calm environment. There are some other people that are saying during an asthma attack, you better be teaching them to cough and deep breathe. You better be teaching them to cough and deep breathe. Which group are you on? Which group are you on? Oh, ah. This is so good. I didn't even, I, these were my notes for today, just to encourage you guys. And I didn't even realize that these scenarios would be so, oh, all right. Um, I like that comment, calm environment, other not to exaggerate the attack, then teaching cough and deep breathe. Hmm. 
coughing and deep breathing is more important. It's important. It's very important. Okay. All right. So the correct answer for all of you NCLEX passers out there, it is going to, in fact, be last person I'm waiting for. Is it two? Okay. The Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The correct answer actually is going to be maintaining a calm environment. Yes, maintaining a calm environment is going to be a priority over coughing and deep breathing. And I know some people are like, no, nah, Regina, you wrong. That That's not it. But you have to really think about it. Trust me on this. Trust me. I don't care what anybody else tells you guys. During an asthma attack, is your patient going to be in a mood for teaching? Are they going to be in a mood for you to say, you know what, I've been meaning to teach you this anyways. I know you're having a little trouble breathing, but I'm going to teach you the steps to cough and deep breathe. Are you ready to learn them? Right? Um, and so, of course, they're not going to be ready. They're going to say, I, I can't breathe. No, like I can't even process this coughing and deep breathing. I can't even do it. I can't even do it, Regina. Right? So um, the priority is going to be maintaining a calm environment because asthmatic flare-ups are usually triggered by something, right? And so we need to get the patient to settle and be as calm as possible, right? We need to get them to be able to focus on where they are, trying, trying to maintain a patent airway as much as possible. And of course, other interventions are gonna be taking place but if NCLEX gives you those two scenarios, you cannot, you cannot get that wrong, okay? You cannot do teaching. And this is a principle, guys. You cannot do teaching when a patient is under distress. If they are in pain, you can't teach them anything if somebody's in pain. If a little child is kicking and screaming, you can't teach them anything. It's hard enough to teach kids any you know anything right and, and, and so if they're certainly under distress or they are upset they can't learn it right they can't learn it and so it sounds good oh yeah we'll get them coughing and deep breathing but it said teaching it says teaching and so you can't you cannot do that okay um and yeah shireen says how are they going to breathe and cough if they are not calm right they are not in the mood it's not a mood right and so uh, I, I'm not trying to put down those of you who picked it, those of you who picked it because you sincerely thought it was the correct answer, but I'm saying you have to, uh, these, these are things you have to cover before you take your exam, okay? And we're all here to learn. I could ask a million of those questions and maybe the people who got this one right might get the next one wrong. So we're all, it's just, this is a safe space to learn, all right. Nursing is something that you evolve in and you get better with it over time. It's like a fine wine. You get better with it over time. You get more confident um, and then you're able to most importantly give back and help somebody else. All right. I'm helping you guys get your license because at the end of the day, we need more nurses. All right. And honestly, the nurses that are out here are living their best lives. They're living their best lives because um, the pay, you honestly cannot pay a nurse enough. That is how valuable we are. You can't even, you you could try though. I, I know some nurses that are doing very well, but the value that you have in the ability for you to save somebody's life, you really can't put a price on it. And so hospitals are competing for nurses to the utmost. I have never seen, I have never seen the desire, the, the, the pandemic really, really changed things. I have never seen the, the desire for a nurse. The sign on bonuses are insane. The, 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 the relocation bonuses, you know, you would be, let me just say this about 10 years ago, if a company offered you a $3,000 sign-on bonus, you would be like, oh my goodness. If they said they would pay for you to relocate up to you know, $1,500, it would be like, oh my goodness, that is amazing. Now, the sign-on bonuses are like $30,000. Full relocation fees. People will move you across the country to be there. They will they will pay for your travel. They will pay for you to go back to school. You're you're able to make 80, 90 dollars an hour. It's it's incredible. Nurses are really um they are really valued. I mean, 
we really really are all right and you can do anything you can go anywhere with your license if you pass this one test you can go anywhere okay and so i can't um i cannot stress to you enough getting this part of your life completed and not putting it off okay not putting it off and it, it is um there are many things in your life that are important to you right now. I know it. I know there are. And there are many things in your life that are competing with your study time, with your dedication, with your, you know, even with your monetary ability to even purchase one of my books. I know that you have many things competing with those. But let me tell you this. The investment into your license is going to repay you 110 times over. And so I want you to really look at the things that currently are taking up a lot of your time and see if they have the investment in the same way, uh, the return in the same way, I should say. Okay, <laughs> uh, so social media, Netflix, you're paying that Netflix subscription every month, that Disney Plus for your kids every month, cut that out, get in the virtual trainer, get your license and forget Disney Plus, you can take them to Disney World. My nurse and friends are taking their kids to Disney World two and three times a year, all right? Um, and, and so you just have to think about your priority. Thank you. Catley says, I love your virtual trainer. Yes, yeah, don't let, don't, don't let this opportunity pass you by. It is an amazing opportunity once you get that, once you get those letters, man, once you get those letters behind your name, you are able to reinvest. You're able to reinvest, all right, into yourself and your family. I can't tell you, listen, y'all know I'm not lying. Y'all know how good it is for nurses out here. Um, and, and especially those that are willing to, those that are willing to travel, those that are willing to relocate, those that want to go back to school, those nurses that want to do research right now. We are so needed. We are so, so needed. So let's get into it. Let's, you know, let's make this a priority. Let's make it a goal. Let's get into it. Um, if you guys want to follow up, if you don't have uh, the Quick Facts book, you can get this book by itself. If not, this is a great time also to get the NCLEX Virtual Trainer um, and get the entire program. All right. I don't care which one you do. I just want you to get started. Every Monday, um, every Monday, I give you the opportunity to recommit yourself and, and myself too. There's some things that I have to get done. I have to get done if I want to be able to play later. I have to work now. So um, uh, Ngozi says, I passed in July. Okay. Remar was a great help. Quick facts in the VT, awesome materials. And I'm still here because learning is continuous. I don't even, I, thank you so much. Thank you so, so much for just sharing your testimony, your experience, and then uh, reminding us all that learning is continual. Learning is continual, all right? Okay, guys, um, I'm gonna get out of here because you have a lot of work to do and I have a lot of work to do, but I have, uh, I have really appreciated our time together and I am super excited to hear the next testimonial. Who is next on passing their NCLEX? Remember, guys, you can... You will and you must pass NCLEX. I love you so much. Stay safe, right? Stay safe because we truly need you in the nursing field. And let me know how I can do to help you help you get there. All right. Congratulations, LaFay. Uh, she says, I passed on 825-21. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I uh, Thank you so much. Uh, we are all praying for you. We're all praying for you right now. Um, God, just please just touch each and every heart that is on here who wants to be a nurse, um, who has a desire in their heart. Let nothing stop them. Let them know that they are more than conquerors, Lord, uh, by your goodness, your grace, and your sacrifice. We thank you so much for the opportunity to learn and study together. We know we have a ministry. We know we have a calling. And Lord, let nothing of, of our own selves get in that way of what you have purposed us to do since before time began. Uh, you're so good. We thank you. We love you. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, our righteousness. Amen. Bye-bye, guys.